Hi everyone, um, just here to quickly show you how to register and update the OBD Star product. It's a um, Keymaster DP. Pretty basic, pretty straightforward. Most people that use Android tablets will pretty much know how to do this, but I do want to walk you through it anyway. So first thing is, when we're at the very main page of the Android screen, there's a button down the bottom here, it says DP. So we want to click DP. It'll open the application. Once the application is open, we want to hit agree. If you do not agree, it will not open the app. So first thing, for registration purpose, we want to come to setting. And then we want to come down to user information. And it says, please log in first. So the first thing you really need to do is actually register and create an account. This is pretty simple. But I'll walk you through it. So we're going to hit register. Now the first thing you're going to notice is that the first two fields are completely blank and it says please contact a VCI box. Now this is quite important. A lot of people seem to be having trouble figuring out this part. What I'm going to do is I'll, I'll show you quickly. So with the VCI interface at the moment it is not powered. It is completely unplugged literally has a data transfer or cable plugged into it, but that's it. So the unit is not actually linked to the OBD star via Bluetooth. So it needs to be linked together before the VCI serial number and register password will actually show up. Pretty easy, pretty straightforward. You want to take your VCI box and you just want to plug a 12 volt barrel pin connector into this. As you can see, plugged into here, plugged into here, it now receives power. You should have a power and a Bluetooth light. If we come back over to the OBD star, as you can see at the moment, the fields are still blank. But if I go back and then go register again, as you can see it now has a serial number and a register password. So the next step you want to do is you just want to fill in the next couple of fields, all the ones with the orange asterisks next to them are the ones that need to be filled in obviously. So this is all dummy passwords so you can you can watch whatever you want. Email, I suggest you use an email that you're actually going to check from time to time. Don't just auto generate disposable emails for this purpose, you may need it. So I'm going to use my own email here, which is lewin at remoteking.com. If you guys need to contact me, you know my email now. Company name, address, and all the rest is actually not needed information. Totally up to you if you want to put it in there. Then click OK to register. Register successful. Once it is registered, you still need to log in. So then what you want to do is you want to click on the password, type in the password that you've just created. And then click login. Alrighty, so that's the actual device registered and you could literally go and use it right now but I want to show you how to update the device. This is very important. This company in particular makes a lot of updates for this device so please try and keep it up to date. So there's two different ways of updating it, two different results from updating should I say. There's one that actually updates the whole app itself and then there's one that updates the information that's inside the application. So the first thing you want to do is you always want to update the app first. So we'll go back to the very main screen that you see when you start the app up. You want to come into settings. You want to go all the way to the bottom, about. And there's an update check button. Please click the update check button. As you can see, it'll search for an update. Make sure you are connected to a Wi-Fi network, which I am. And as you can see, whether to upgrade software, yes. 
So depending on your internet speed, depends on how long this will take. I have pretty good 4G internet at the moment, so this one will only take seconds. It's now going to ask you, do you wish to install the app that it's updated? So yes, you do want to install it, obviously. Click install. It will actually delete the old app and then install a new version of the app you were just using. So once it's done, it says app installed. Click open. Once again, agree to disclaimer. So now the app is completely up to date. The next step is you want to actually update all the information inside the app. So one key upgrade, click one key upgrade. It's going to load a lot of information. So as you can see here, we have I don't know, maybe 26, there we go, almost 30. So the easiest way is to update all of these at once is next to software name, there's a checkbox. Click on that checkbox. It will then select every update that's available for the device. And then up in the top right corner, there's a bulk update page. So once you push that, it's gonna start downloading all the information to the device. As you can see, it does about four at a time and it will start downloading the information. Once this is completely downloaded and done, you are good to go. It has the most up-to-date software and it um, is completely ready to use. So I'm not gonna sit here and watch it go through all the updates because it's gonna take a while. Some of them are quite big. Um, yeah, it just depends on the amount of information that's obviously in the update. It is important, really important to do this. Uh, they fix bugs issues, they fix, they fix problems that they've created. There's all sorts of stuff that they fix in here. Please update this device. Once a week would probably be enough, but if you can, do it every time you go to use it. Won't hurt, won't hurt. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks guys.